Okay, I think we can start. Uh, hello to everyone. I'm delighted to welcome you at the webinar series for library and information science students brought to you by IFLA Division C. My name is Albina Krumska. I'm Associate Professor of the St. Petersburg State University of Culture, and I am the Chair of the IFLA Section on Education and Training. And today we are entering the third year with this project. Uh, we started this project uh, two years ago in 2021, and we are glad that we had several interesting uh, webinars on uh, diverse uh, topics uh, over the past uh, two years. And today we're going to talk about the sustainable development goals, the topic that is very important, and especially uh, uh, during the, the over, over uh, the past uh, few years when uh, IFLA uh, started to discuss this and uh, also IFLA uh, started to showcase uh, uh, library projects uh, uh, that aimed at uh, uh, achieving uh, sustainable development goals. So today we have three uh, interesting uh, experts on this topic, and uh, I'd like to thank the project team who organized this uh, uh, project, and uh, especially uh, a, a great uh, thank you words to Suzanne list Tretham, who did a great job uh, uh, to organize uh, this event uh, for us. And uh, I hope this webinar will help you to learn more about uh, this topic, about the sustainable development goals, and give you the ideas how you can contribute to achieving these goals. And uh, now I turn it to uh, Suzanne, who will introduce our keynote speakers. Thank you, and enjoy the, this event. Thank you very much, Albina. My name is Susanne Listretan. I work for the Austrian Library Association in the Department of Education and Training, and I'm also a member of the Sending Committee of the SET section of IFLA. And I would like to share my screen. So the topic of our webinar today is Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs in the view of LIS students. And on the website of the United Nations, one finds a summary of what libraries contribute to the SDGs, and it is quite a lot. Worldwide public libraries, parliamentary libraries, national university libraries, research libraries, school libraries, and special libraries ensure that information and the skills to use those informations are available to everyone. Libraries, and we all know it, provide information, access to information through communication technology. They help people to develop the capacity to use information and to preserve information to ensure access for generations to come. And access to information is the one topic, one of the topics that can support all of the SDGs. Library services contribute to outcomes across the SDGs. Our speakers each highlight um, and talk about the SDGs from a particular angle. But before we dive deeper into the topic, a few organizational notes. The, the event is being recorded. This includes the chat. Um, the video will be posted on YouTube and the link will be posted on IFLA Division C webpage as well as the section on education and training website and social media. If you have questions or comments, please type them into the Q&A box or the chat box. If you have questions regarding privacy, please um, contact professional support at ifla.org. And before we start, uh, a huge thank you goes to my colleagues from IFLA SET for preparing this webinar, especially Albina and Nicole, as well as my colleague um, Katarina Portugal from um, Ensolib. And a huge thank you also goes to Loida Garcia Febo um, for always supporting with your expert advice. Thank you very much. Now I have the great pleasure to introduce our speakers and our program for today's webinar. So our first keynote will be delivered by Loida Garcia Febo, and I will introduce her in a moment. After each keynote, 
we have prepared a survey um, that addresses questions about the SDGs from the perspective of LIS students. And we are very much looking forward to your participation in this survey. Our second keynote is by Petra Hauke. Petra Hauke serves as a lecturer at the Berlin School for Library and Information Science in Berlin, Germany. She holds a PhD in Library and Information Science, and she is currently the secretary of Ensolib IFLAS Environment Sustainability in Libraries section. She is, she is also a founding member of the German speaking Green Library Network. Besides others, her main expertise is about green libraries. And her um, keynote today is on green and sustainable libraries with a special focus on SDG 13 climate action. The uh, keynote will be a recording, but Petra is available for live Q&A. Our third keynote is by Christine Paberzera Meresa. She is a member engagement officer at, at IFLA. In this role, she works with organizations from around the world to create the library map of the world, a source of country level library statistics, a collection of stories about impactful library programs contributing to the achievement of the SDGs and a source of information um, about the library field in each country. Her keynote will be on building the knowledge and skills for sustainable development. This is also a recording, but Christine is also available for live Q&A. And now I would like to introduce you to our first keynote speaker in a little more detail. Loida Garcia Febo. She is a Puerto Rican American librarian and an international library consultant expert in library services to diverse populations and human rights. She was also the president of the American Library Association from 2018 to 2019. She is worldwide known for her passion about diversity, community, sustainability, innovation, and digital transformation, about library workers, library advocacy, wellness for library workers, and new librarians, which she, she has taught in 44 countries, which is very impressive. And her keynote today will be about SDGs and libraries, LIS students' contributions to transforming our world. And Loida will also be moderating this webinar and the survey we have planned. Loida, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Suzanne. And um, regards to all my fellow keynote panelists, um, speakers today, I know they are all very dedicated and doing great work in the area of sustainability and um, with the sustainable development goals as well. So I'm happy to moderate this event today. And um, we are going to have some questions after each one of the presentations. And um, the questions will be written on the chat. And we ask that uh, the attendees please participate and answer the question on the chat. And at the end, we're going to provide a summary, and I think uh, more information uh, will be uh, provided by the IFLA set at another time. Well, now I'm going to start, and um, I'm very happy to um, share with you some um, notions. First, uh, notions about uh, what is the scenario in academic libraries related to the SDGs, and also uh, what is the potential for students to participate. I'm going to share my screen. Okay, let's see, great. Um, the LIS field has a great opportunity to support the United Nations development agenda and to contribute to transform our world. This talk includes sections from my keynote for the conference of the teaching and learning section of CONUL which is the consortium of national and university libraries in Ireland. And some concepts I've been exploring as part of my work in the area of sustainability. I hope the talk can spark ideas for you to integrate the UN Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, in your LIS curriculum and programs. I also want to immediately highlight that we have an amazing opportunity to include Gen Z in this work. 
Gen Z is the newest generation in LIS. They have shown great interest and are taking action around social economic themes, social justice, preserving the planet and sustainability and are the first true digital natives. And so they are changing the world at a rapid pace and we got to be where they are. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals was adopted by all United Nations member states in 2015. It provides a shared blueprint for peace and prosperity for people and the planet, now and into the future. And at its heart are 17 SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals on the screen, which are an urgent call um, for action by all countries in a global partnership together. The SDGs build on decades of work by countries and the United Nations, and IFLA has advocated for years of the UN for libraries to be included in access to information is part of goal 16. I personally have been part of this process for many years. The Sustainable Development Goals uh, report 2022 by the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network revealed that for the second year in a row, the world is no longer making progress on the SDGs. The report identified causes for this situation. There are new diseases, there is an urgent need for climate action, attention to biodiversity threats, human rights, massive transformation in tech, intensified polarization where we don't agree on facts, higher insecurity, societies are increasingly divided, and there is general existential threat. That was the report says. So mental health is a top concern for the United Nations. Although the panorama sounds dreadful, there are great opportunities for libraries to contribute, to not leave anyone behind during this decade of action. UN experts said that people uh, need help to craft new stories uh, to better their future and prospects in life. Libraries are already helping people to craft new stories to help people to find who they are and what we, they, you know, we as human value. So we are already helping in that sense and helping to the development of academic uh, communities. That's where the LIS students uh, are. So what can libraries do? In addition to sharing knowledge and publicizing the goals and having practical advice available to community members wanting to turn theory into action, libraries will surely continue to support the kind of interdisciplinary uh, research and teaching that focus on the SDGs. And this was said by one of our colleagues, a uh, former director of Corner Libraries in New York. And how specifically libraries are contributing to development. As part of the American Library Association's UN SDGs task force that I shared, uh, we created charts that demonstrate how academic, public, academic libraries um, and school libraries, I should say, are contributing in the following areas. And in the following uh, 17 goals in those areas. But today I want to show the chart that speaks about academic libraries because that's where um, that's where the environment of our uh, target group today is. For instance, goal three: good health and wellness. Libraries, academic libraries are scheduling events about wellness, yoga, stress reduction during final exams, group exercise sessions, therapy dogs. Uh, related to goal 13, climate action, support, they are supporting university sustainability initiatives, carrying out an exchange, for instance, of used clothes. Um, they're also presenting events to teach people to create things so they can reuse and recycle and also presenting a series of talks about sustainability. These are some examples. 
I invite you all to visit the ALA's UN um, 2030s SDGs Task Force website to learn more about the charts that we have developed, which you can download for free and add the information from your libraries. Here we have some charts and also we created bookmarks about the SDGs. And these you can use to raise awareness of your library services or your library school, um, research agenda and different partnerships and their relations to the SDGs. Since this is a very short talk, I will go straight now into examples <clears throat> excuse me, of strategies from universities and academic efforts related to the SDGs and LIS programs and students. And these are from different uh, fields, but you can relate them to ours. For instance, Cavels International, this is the company, helped the business school at St. Joseph's University to develop an SDGs dashboard, which is a way for schools within universities to show their research outputs on SDGs framework and other schools can adopt the dashboard. Libraries could also adopt the dashboard. I don't know anyone that have done so, but I am currently working with one and we hope to um, unveil the dashboard in the next um, weeks. The SDG Compact Fellows. The UN, in collaboration with the International Publishers Association, developed top action tips for academia. The tips for academia and uh, academic librarians on how to uncover the SDGs uh, scholarship include strategize, advocate for SDGs, support SDG research, share SDG strengths, guide users to SDG content, curate SDG collections, refine metadata, cultivate literacy, and walk the SDG walk aligning with campus sustainability initiatives. So it's very exciting if you want to explore more. The Sustainable Development Solutions Network, an initiative from the United Nations, has compiled case studies about accelerating education for the SDGs in universities. And this is very interdisciplinary. Um, it includes cases from all over the world, for instance, here's an example from the University of Bristol. Their sustainable development unit has been developed by a multidisciplinary uh, teaching team. Includes academics from across the Faculty of Science, the Faculty of Engineering, Faculty of Social Science and Law, and the Faculty of Arts. So it's truly interdisciplinary. Uh, it is part of their Bristol Futures curriculum. So it has been included in their curriculum. This is very interesting to explore. Um, and, and this is based on the provision of skills awareness and agency to undergraduate students at the university. Another and my last um, example, oh, I have two more. Librarians at the University of Michigan have developed one of the most comprehensive library research guides I've seen searching or, or featuring a selection of scholarly databases data sources, programs, news, and target information resources to investigate the overall SDGs framework and research international progress to individual SDGs. Lastly, uh, and this is a very new, Libraries for Sustainable Development, an initiative from the Mortenson Center at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Campaign, uh, has introduced the concept of information action briefs. I invite you to look at the website, but a very uh, succinct uh, summary is that it is a resource guide to implement transformational actions using information to advance the SDGs. For instance, you can select one of the SDGs and it helps you to address what is our goal? Why should we care? How is this related to information? What can I or the profession um, do? 
and includes also an infographic to offer a visual representation of that SDG. So it's very interesting. I uh, invite you to explore that. To summarize, we're at the end of our um, of my presentation. Inform yourselves. And I have included emojis because I've been uh, reading and apparently Gen Z and the newer generation love emojis. I love emojis too. So some emojis here. Uh, inform yourselves about the SDGs and their potential. Read about what other libraries and organizations are doing. Review the examples I shared, discuss with your fellow students, with your professors, or if you are already working in a library uh, with your administration, your colleagues, and take action. That's the most important part, right? After you're informed and, and discuss. Um, LIS students together with libraries and librarians are building the libraries of the future today. LIS students are contributing already and are helping societies to build that better and smarter. So I wish you all the best to take this information and share with others, analyze it and take action. And now, we have uh, gotten to the end of my talk. And now we're going to the chat. And there we're going to have uh, one of the, um, the first question. And um, someone is going to write it on the chat, the first yes, question. I, I'm, going, I'm going to run a poll later. Okay. Okay. And so okay. I want... I wanted to read for you the first question. Um, thank you so much for your great comments about my presentation. The links should be um, released once the, um, the recording of the session is released. It will have all that information. So the first question, to what extent does your LIE school program cover learning about sustainable development and the SDGs? Okay, so it's happening. They are um, answering. Okay. All right, so um, let's see, 41% has participated. Albina, this was posted on the chat earlier. This question? Uh, no, this is uh, for, for, this question is for the poll. Okay. All right. Okay. He, here is the, the results. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to some extent, so to what extent your LIS program cover learning about the SDGs? To some extent, that's the no. I have to say, unfortunately, not at all is the top one. And the second answer is to some extent. So there is some work to be done. It means that if there is a need for this webinar. Thank you so much for attending. And uh, once we have the recording, it means that there is a need for the webinar. So, um, OK, now we're going to, I believe, to the second uh, 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 keynote for the day. Okay, just a second. I will turn on the recording. Hello, everybody. My name is Petra Hauke. I'm from Berlin in Germany and I'm a visiting teacher at the Berlin School for Library and Information Science at the Humboldt University in Berlin. I'm co-founder of the German-speaking Green Library Network, and I'm currently secretary of ENSOLIB, if less environment, sustainability, and library section. The title of my lecture is Green and Sustainable Libraries Facing the United Nations Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development with a special focus 
on SDG 13 Climate Action. My schedule is as follows. I will start with the United Nations Agenda 2030, which was adopted by IFLA, the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions. Here I will introduce you to the collection of SDG stories with a special focus on SDG 13 climate action. One of IFLA's currently very important sections is ENSULIP, which stands, as already said, for environment, sustainability and libraries. Beside many other projects, ENSULIP has recently published the first official definition of what is a green library, and I will go with you through the different topics of that uh, definition. Last but not least, I will ask you to think about how is your library and how are you as a librarian contributing to the SDGs. Just a short reminder. The agenda was published in 2015. The 17 goals were adopted by all United Nation member states in 2015 as part of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which set out a 15-year plan to achieve the goals. The agenda is a universal call, a call to all, a call to action, to end poverty, protect the planet and improve the lives and prospects of everyone and everywhere. It is obvious the 17 goals cannot be achieved separately. They depend on each other. For example, climate action goal 13 cannot be achieved unless at the same time at least goal 12 responsible consumption and production and also goal 17 partnerships for the goals. Each goal comes along with specific targets and indicators. Targets specify the goals, while indicators represent the metrics by which the world aims to track whether these targets are achieved. The United Nations have defined five, five targets and eight indicators for SDG 13. For example, target 13.3 is as follows. Improve education, awareness raising and human and institutional capacity on climate change mitigation, adaptation, impact reduction and early warning. And not only this target seems to address directly to the world's libraries. IFLA, the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, has been actively involved with the creation of the Agenda 2030 through advocating for the inclusion of access to information, which is Goal 1610. IFLA says libraries are key institutions for achieving the goals. Libraries can drive progress across the entire Agenda 2030 because libraries are well positioned to contribute to the Sustainable Development Goals. As a network of at least 2.3 million institutions, they have both global reach and the ability to understand and respond to local needs and priorities. For example, libraries support Goal 13 by providing sustainable systems of sharing and circulating materials that reduces waste. Libraries provide historical records about coastal change and land use. They also provide research and data needed to inform climate change policy. And last but not least, libraries enable widespread 
access to information needed to guide decision making by local and national governments on topics like hunting, fishing, land use and water management. Other than commercial information platforms, libraries are the guarantor for access to reliable information. And this exit is a prerequisite for achieving the SDGs. IFLA has clearly positioned itself and thus all the world's libraries as advocates for the United Nations Agenda 2030. The motto is sustainability is libraries business. Libraries should serve as exemplars, educators, enablers of initiatives to promote sustainability in all areas of life. And this engagement means more than just information, our usual business. Examples of libraries worldwide that follow the demands of the SDGs are presented at IFLA's Library Map of the World. With the SDG stories, the map presents worldwide examples of how libraries contribute to the implementation of the SDGs in their communities. And these libraries exist in very different contexts, from large national or university libraries to small public school or also mobile libraries. On the platform, you can search explicitly for a specific goal or for a certain country. If you click on goal 13, climate action, you will find six stories from six countries. In the map, the, respect, the respective countries are highlighted dark green, while the stories are listed on the left. All libraries play a significant role in providing access to data, research and knowledge that supports informed research and public access to information about climate change. One very impressive example comes from Ukraine, the city of Lviv. In 2016, a tragedy occurred at the Gribovitsky landfill in Lviv when an uncontrolled fire caused the death of six people. This horrible accident directed the attention of the city's entire community towards the area's environmental problems. To address this huge problem and to foster awareness and engagement of the public, the library created a program called Garbage Hero that educates children in eco-thinking and recycling. The project was aimed at children aged 4 to 15, their parents and also teachers. The library educates participants in equal thinking, caring for natural resources, reducing waste and subsequently passing on their knowledge to relatives and friends. The Eco Corner at the library offers on-site events such as planting greenery, designing the winter garden and drawing competitions. The library also coordinates promotional activities such as organizing eco excursions, producing marketing materials and updating the library blog with relevant eco-friendly articles. A mother of a participating child stated, remarked, my daughter has been visiting the Lviv Children's Library since she was three years old. She is seven now and it is one of her favorite places in Lviv. I was surprised that in addition to the love of books, the library can inspire a lot of other important things such as rational use of our planet's resources. My children's habits change me. The project was awarded as runner-up of the Iflagrin Library Award 2017. 
you make ask now 2017 what what about the eco library in RIF today please visit their facebook page despite the horrible russian invasion and the terrible war in their country the eco library still exists and runs an eco education program on one hand, the library tries to give the children a safe home. On the other hand, the library runs an education program on compost, focusing on the issue of harvest in Ukraine, which is really more important for the whole world than ever. The library also held a Zoom conversation for students about sorting garbage and programming classes in Scratch. I wish to say respect for the courageous stance of the Ukrainian colleagues, which we should support as far as we can. Let me come back to the already mentioned IFLA Green Library Award. The award is hosted by Ansolip IFLA section on environment, sustainability and libraries. If you are looking for support in positioning your library or yourself as a green and sustainable library or librarian, I invite you cordially to visit the Ensolips website. Here you will find links to our projects, our conferences and to the IFLA Green Library Award and also about our standing committee, an international group of 20 volunteers. And perhaps you are interested to join us and to work with us. The standing committee is very busy and has created a lot of projects as there are book publications, the Green Library website with the definition of what is a Green Library, the Green Library checklists, the Green Library poster, the template is open for everybody to create his or her own library poster. Then the Green Library tools, the IFLA and Solid newsletter, which appears twice per year with open access, the Ansel webinar series. All webinars are recorded and free available from our website uh, and already mentioned the annual IFLA Green Library Award competition. There is also an International Green Library Bibliography, which might be useful for everybody in the field of library and information studies and research. And so the books projects are all available with open access. Let us come back to the question, what is a green library? Ansolip has published a definition on this question, which is now available in 31 languages. If you cannot find your language, more translations are welcome. Ansolip's definition says, green libraries are sustainable libraries per se. A green and therefore sustainable library is a library which takes into account environmental, economic, and social sustainability. Green and sustainable libraries may be of any size, but they should have a clear sustainability agenda, which includes green buildings, green office principles, sustainable economy, sustainable library services, social sustainability, environmental management, and last but not least, commitment to general environmental goals and programs. But let us see some examples. Green buildings and equipment means the emissions or carbon footprint of the buildings are actively decreased. To be realistic, not every library can boast a new sustainable building. But it may be possible to retrofit a roof greenery or a photovoltaic system on the roof. And even a green facility management can reduce the ecological footprint by saving light, heating and water 
or by cleaning with ecological products. Furthermore, there are many libraries that use their roofs or surroundings for urban gardening projects to draw their users' attention to the benefits of gardening. The Green and Sustainable Library includes also green office principles, means the operational routines and processes are environmentally sustainable. Examples are reducing waste, going digital, printing double-sided, etc., etc. The Green and Sustainable Library includes also promoting a sustainable economy. For example, limiting consumption, circular economy, and sharing economy. Here is an example from Finland. The Asikala Municipal Library implemented a service that puts into circulation tools and products to serve citizens changing and accelerating consumption needs. A green and sustainable library includes also sustainable library services, as there is information, shared spaces, devices, education, fostering a positive carbon handprint. Here we see an example from the Portsmouth Public Library, which has successfully collaborated with community partners to plan and implement educational programs called handprint parties that encourage positive action around a wide range of sustainability topics. A green and sustainable library includes also social sustainability in terms of education, literacy, community engagement, cross-cultural diversity, social inclusion, participation, reduced inequality. The public library Bad Oldesloe, Germany, was the winner of the IFLA Green Library Award in 2017. The library had created a large program, beside others a cooperation with the local food sharing group that offered rescued fruit from the local market in the library. The Green and Sustainable Library includes also environmental management, which means to deliberate environmental goals, to decrease the library's own negative impact on environment, and the environmental policy, which means the implementation and the results of environmental work should be communicated to a broader audience, as we have here an example from the University of Cork College Library. The Green and Sustainable Library clearly demonstrates its commitment to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, for example, by displaying the IFLA poster prominently at the library entrance or on the website. Ancelup Standing Committee members have recently designed a poster which demonstrates a certain library's individual green goals and activities. This poster can be downloaded as a template for everybody to create his or her own poster. Other than English and German, the IFLA poster is also available in Arabic, Chinese, French, Russian and Spanish. And you can download the template for your own translation. And now I ask you, how is your library contributing to sustainable development? Our Brazilian colleague Natalita Cardoso developed a program where libraries can mirror their own contributions in 10 languages. You can download the program as a checklist and see her suggestions on how to meet the demands of all the SDGs. To come back to our special focus on SDG 13, climate action, uh, Natalita says, what can a library do? She suggests 
build a specific collection about the topic, organize exhibitions about the topic, organize workshops, lectures, talks, etc. about the topic, sign the libraries for future statement of principles, offer bicycle parking to avoid use of cars, provide information on how to get to the library by public transport on your website, etc. 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 Be creative. Many more initiatives are possible. As already mentioned, the SDGs cannot achieve separately. Especially for climate protection, SDG 4 is essential specifically for libraries. Natalie this suggests, of course, a specific collection, exhibitions, etc., but also conversation groups, school support, and workshops, lectures, etc., as we have seen in the SDG story from the Eco Library in the Ukraine. Yeah, you may now say that in your library you do not have the staff nor the money to organize any activities. The answer is given by the agenda's SDG 17, Partnership for the Goals. You have the space that you can make available and you have your library audience that is of interest as a target group for potential sp uh, partners and also sponsors, yes. Invite volunteers, sustainability experts, green companies or organizations to offer or implement their SDG projects in or with your library. So you are not alone. Take the first step. I come to the end of my lecture. I hope you enjoyed it. For more information, please visit Ensolib's website and enjoy our video. And now it's up to you to position yourself or your library as a green and sustainable library or librarian, be it as exemplar, as educator or as enabler, because sustainability is libraries and therefore librarians within us. Thank you so much for your attention. And thank you, uh, Petra, uh, very informative. And I think we have now another question, another survey um, for the attendees. And um, the second question is, do you wish for more SDG related lectures in your LIS program? And let's see what the attendees answer. I think this one's gonna be an easy answer. I, I can, I hope everybody wishes, yes, that they will have more SDGs related uh, lectures because it seems that there, there are not many based on the first question. So um, there is need for these, um, subject. And I feel if you need also, the question is on the chat and you can answer on the poll that is popping up on your screen. And Albina's letting us know when it's, it's ready. Yes, Lloyd, and there is one more question. Do you think you will need the knowledge about the Sustainable Development Goals in the future? Okay, so we have two questions. Yes. Oh, indeed, we have to scroll down. I have to scroll down to see it. Yes, I'll just read it again. Do you think you will need the knowledge about the SDGs in the future? It seems that is a yes, but um, Albina will let us know when it's ready. Seventy-one percent uh, uh, participated answered in this poll. So, uh, and 
here are the results. Okay, so to um, yes, people think they wish uh, for more SDG related lectures in the LAS program and yes, they also think that they will need the knowledge about the SDGs in the future. That's wonderful. Okay, now we are going then to our um, third keynote speaker for today. Yes, and I'm going to launch the video. Just a second. Hello, uh, my name is Christine Pavars Ramirez. I'm ECOS member engagement officer, and I'm here uh, today to talk uh, about the library map of the world and uh, SDG stories. The library map of the world is ECOS project since 2017, uh, and um, currently provides uh, three types of content. The things that you can find there are library statistics, the country level aggregated uh, statistics on basic metrics such as the number of libraries or staff or number of registered users or visits. Uh, it has a separate uh, component of uh, country profiles. Uh, these are more uh, complete uh, pr profiles for each country where you can learn about library environments and library systems in each country, organizations, uh, find full texts of uh, uh, library laws and things like that. And the SDG stories, uh, a component that I will be talking a little more uh, today. So if you will connect online, uh, you will currently find uh, library statistics from 139 countries. Uh, and territories from all around the world. Uh, we have currently 57 uh, SDG stories uh, that you can uh, review. And uh, we do have 29 uh, country profiles, uh, different countries that are colored on the map, uh, which you can uh, go online and uh, look more deeply into it. But to the main topic of today, uh, the SDG stories, uh, it is a collection of uh, we believe inspiring stories about impactful library programs, uh, different projects that uh, contribute to achievement of sustainable development goals. And uh, something that I want to mention here that uh, these are not stories about libraries. Uh, these are stories uh, about uh, people, uh, about our communities and the meaning uh, that libraries are bringing uh, to their lives uh, across the board of uh, of the 17 sustainable development goals. Another thing to mention is that these, uh, the main audience for these stories are not uh, us librarians, uh, but they are our stakeholders and um, uh, most importantly stakeholders who deal uh, with different areas covered uh, by sustainable development goals. And uh, through these stories, uh, we also want to tell uh, a story about the value uh, that libraries are bringing uh, to their community through different programs and uh, how these are changing uh, people's lives. And so uh, thinking about how to better tell uh, these stories to our st stakeholders, uh, we have started uh, with producing a storytelling manual a manual that is called Libraries and the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, where we also try to explain our approach uh, to storytelling and our uh, yeah, requirements for these SDG stories and so. So the manual is a short uh, document, uh, 30 pages long, very interactive and practical and covers several areas. Uh, the first chapter is uh, is called What Story to Tell, and it is uh, basically a listing of all the 17 SDG, SDGs and, uh, and examples of different uh, library activities, uh, services, and programs uh, that can be relevant to one or another uh, sustainable development goal. 
The most important chapter in this storytelling manual uh, is called How to Tell Your Story, and uh, that explains our approach to storytelling, uh, 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 our framework that we, that we call an evidence-based storytelling. A lot of it is about using data in storytelling uh, and, and how to better present uh, the impact and things like that. And I will be talking a little bit more about it in a moment. Uh, but uh, as these are uh, stories that are all published online, uh, digital stories, uh, we do have two very important chapters included. One is how to tell your story visually, uh, that talks about preparing uh, visual materials such as images or videos uh, uh, that will uh, go online together with, uh, <clears throat> with the, stories, the story text. And uh, of course, very important, important chapter on how to deal with copyright and different permissions uh, uh, when we want to, to publish uh, and make uh, those, um, those images or the videos uh, uh, as open as possible uh, on, online and uh, what permissions we need to have and how to, uh, how to um, get the, the, the copyright permissions and things like that. So I invite you also to look at the, the manual and uh, explore yourself, uh, but we, uh, we fairly quickly understood that uh, a manual, even if it's 30 pages long, uh, can be uh, a long document for someone, especially if someone wants to learn quickly. And we turned the most important part of the storytelling manual into a storytelling flowchart. Uh, by using this flowchart, uh, one can easily understand if they have uh, all the necessary information uh, for a story, uh, for the library map, uh, and, uh, and how to go about it. Uh, but it also explains the framework that we have, uh, and we believe that to tell impactful story, uh, each story has to answer three questions. Uh, the first is to talk a little bit about why. And this is to explain the context in the community, the target group needs. Uh, and this is also a place through which we connect to a relevant uh, SDG. Uh, a very important uh, uh, part of the story. And then, of course, we want to tell what we did. And this part should be the, the shortest out of all, uh, where we talk about what, what the program was all about and how it helped to address the, pro the problem uh, that we identified earlier. And most importantly, uh, we want that each story highlights uh, the impact uh, of the program on community, uh, the, the impact on, on people's uh, lives, uh, people who participated in, in the program. And this is also how we uh, demonstrate uh, the contribution that uh, libraries are making uh, on, on the sustainable development goals. Um, another important thing to mention is like uh, in, in every uh, storytelling uh, that we do, we always want to um, be relevant to our target audience. And uh, we would use the, the vocabulary that is um, that our stakeholders are are familiar with. But when it comes to to storytelling for sustainable development goals, it has another meaning uh, because we all know that there are 17 uh, sustainable development goals, uh, but not everybody knows that there are 169 targets and even more indicators that are used to measure. Uh, the success uh, towards achievement of those SDGs. And what you see now on the screen are the, the, mo the, the listing of different targets, uh, because when we work on storytelling for the library map, we really look into the level of targets uh, going beyond the goals because all the specifics are there. And these are targets that are most frequently used uh, in stories uh, uh, on the library map of the world. And what we want to do is uh, we want to include the keywords that are mentioned in those targets into our stories. And that's the way how we are using this target vocabulary that is uh, very familiar to all our stakeholders who deal with sustainable development goals. And I want to mention a resource uh, that IPLA produced a couple of years ago uh, called Information for Development or Why Access Matters Across uh, the SDGs. Uh, that is a listing of those most relevant targets uh, for libraries uh, and those uh, keywords 
such as access to information or access to skills and training, uh, the cultural heritage or other things are bolded out and you can easily see how uh, these targets are relevant uh, to libraries. But today I want to just pick out one of the, uh, the targets and this is target uh, 4.7. Uh, that says that by 2030, we need to ensure that all learners uh, acquire the knowledge and skills that are needed to promote uh, sustainable development. That basically leads us to thinking about what are the skills and knowledge uh, that we as librarians need to have to be able to, to, to contribute uh, to this SDG, uh, which is about education for sustainable development and uh, global citizenship. And uh, if you look at this target, uh, it gives uh, a new role that each librarian uh, can consider, uh, which is about educating uh, for sustainable development. Uh, by working on SDG stories for the library map, uh, I had a chance to learn about some of the, the programs that are already happening uh in relation to target 4.7 and uh, i also want to mention that uh, as i said there are indicators that measure uh, success and one of the indicators uh, that is uh, how we measure if we are successful uh, is the extent to which uh, education for sustainable development uh, is mainstreamed uh, in in uh, education processes national policies uh, uh, curriculum, the teacher's education or student's assessment. And, uh, and here I just want to finish my presentation by giving you some examples of, uh, of those programs that you can learn about uh, on the map, uh, such as, uh, for example, in Croatia in 2019, uh, the government uh, recommended the sustainable development be included in all, in, in all curriculums in primary and secondary education. And uh, we have a story about uh, a school uh, library uh, that uh, worked with together with teachers uh, on a curriculum on green literature uh, through which students had a chance to learn about uh, sustainable living and other things. Or another example we do have on the map comes from Colombia, uh, where uh, practical uh, uh, workshops uh, that were initially done in the library later became part of the official curriculum in, in their school. Uh, or other example from Costa Rica, uh, where the Library Association uh, took uh, up the role of educating uh, a local community on recycling. So these are, can be uh, different ways of, of how education for sustainable development happens uh, in libraries, uh, but in cooperation with schools and uh, educational institutions. Uh, the, the target 4.7 included not only educating on sustainable living, but also uh, human rights and gender equality or culture of peace and nonviolence or promoting a cultural diversity. And I would like to invite you to explore some other stories that we have, uh, uh, such as, for example, uh, from Spain, uh, where in open uh, University of Catalonia, 47% uh, of research projects are aligned to, to SDG number four, which is about gender equality. Uh, or a very interesting story from, from Germany, from Bremen City Library, uh, where they, in their library they have a position of diversity manager uh, that deals with uh, training of staff and uh, uh, training of, of users in intercultural openness and, and things like that. And finally, uh, the story from Colombia, uh, where, where through mobile libraries, uh, the culture of peace and uh, nonviolence uh, had been promoted and, and you can explore uh, yourself. And finally, I would like to invite you to go online uh, and uh, check out the stories yourself. Uh, currently, we do have uh, SDG stories uh, for all 17 SDGs, and you can uh, easily click on the map and find stories from that country or try to find uh, and select a, a particular SDG that you're interested in uh, and uh, read the, the relevant stories. And another resource that I just want to promote because not uh, many know about it, in addition to our stories on the map, we also do have a, a YouTube playlist uh, called DIFLA Library Map of the World SDG Stories, where you will find a very short 
uh, up to one minute long uh, videos featuring those stories and the impact uh, that, um, that those libraries uh, are making on their communities uh, in relevance to uh, different uh, SDGs. Thank you so much, and I'm open for any questions. Thank you. And thank you so much, Christine. <clears throat> now we're going to um, our next question. Um, all the, the, the keynote speakers have been wonderful, great information. But um, talking about the questions, I think the third question had a follow up. And so, um, Albina, what do you think? We can do that? The follow up? Uh, yes, if, uh, okay. if our attendees can uh, put answers or any examples yes. or comments in yes. the chat. Yes. Okay, so let me go over the third question. The third question we already did, but for to refresh our memory, do you think you will need the knowledge about the SDGs in the future? The overwhelming response was yes. Now, the follow up to that question is, could you share an example or comment on how you will need uh, the knowledge about the SDGs in the future? And then um, if you could type in the chat. Could you share an example or comment? Yes, it's right on the chat. Um, I hope that you're uh, encouraged to uh, answer on the chat about this question. But um, while the attendees do this, maybe we can um, move to the next question, Albina, and then they can yes, write the sure. poll. Okay, we have uh, two more questions on yes. the poll. Okay. And so one, one um, the next question now is, how would you assess your knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development? Okay, and we are seeing the answers are coming in. There is another question and it is, do you know of any SDG related projects in your country? And the answers are coming in. Now that has a follow up, um, a follow up question. If you know about an SDG related project in your country. Could you share an example on the chat? So results for the questions on the poll are coming in. We uh, would like to know about examples on how you will use the knowledge about the SDGs in the future, and also um, an example of a project in your country that is related to the SDG. I, I, I think I'm going to help our attendees. <clears throat> An example or on how um, I, I will need a knowledge, uh, knowledge of the SDGs in the future is, for instance, I'm teaching about the SDGs. I'm helping uh, librarians to understand the importance of the sustainability. And so it's important for us to remember that the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, are, are, are wonderful, right? There are 17. But everything that we do in our planet and in the water is related to sustainability. And so uh, if you recycle, if you help others to understand preservation of the planet, importance of access to information, that's a way in which you are using the SDGs. So it's not really complicated, it's simple. So it's, we should think about it that way. Um, and then for instance, an example on how my country is, um, it's a project that are using the SDGs. There are many examples. Uh, there are some times when they are um, seeking to uh, preserve the water to clean from the garbage and help the fish and um, purify water 
that is part of the SDGs. That is part of the sustainability of the planet and the countries participating. Uh, there might be projects that actually says SDG in the title. And so that is also acceptable, but we should think in simple terms, sustainability is part of it as well. And then we have, um, before we go to the examples on the chat, let's go to the results on the, um, um, that Albina is uh, mm -hmm. helping us with. Okay, here are the results. We have that. Um, how would you assess the knowledge, your knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development? So far, there is, the answer is that there is good knowledge. Good knowledge, that's great. Um, we have other, the second answer is that they have fair knowledge. That's very good, is the truth. So we like to see that. It means that this type of event is needed. Thank you. Um, and we are happy that the knowledge is good. It means that it helped. Um, and now we have uh, the, the next question. Do you know of any SDG related projects in your country? We have um, that yes, people know about projects. And um, at the same time, uh, they also know of projects in international areas, not necessarily in their country. So it's good. They are informed both ways. There are still some countries or some people that have not heard of those projects or don't know. And it's part of everything, right? Because um, um, you're still learning about it. So it's great. Please share the webinar with others so they know. And now we are going to some examples on the chat. Let's see. Okay, there is um, an example from Nigeria. It has to do with media information literacy. Thank you. In Sri Lanka, a project successfully implemented solar panels in five villages that produce electricity for rural development activities. That is wonderful. And I hope libraries are involved somehow. And um, yes, Rafaela answer the question why she needs to know the SDGs for the future to implement the SDGs as part of their workflow. Yes, sounds um, simple, but it's part of it. Okay, and then there is a note about um, something that um, it has to do with the, a library in Berlin Pankow neighborhood in other neighborhoods too. And um, it says, what I understand in that Ilona Boss mentioned is that the website of the library can include examples of the SDGs and how the library cares about them, how they're promoting and supporting them. Definitely the chart I um, shared from ALA that you can download free can be used to um, communicate how the library is um, promoting and also contributing to development because you can write the examples uh, from your library services or programs, which each one of the goals, depending which one you want to uh, match perhaps. Um, okay, another answer. I will need the SDGs in my future to better serve the community of librarian. Um, she, it's in um, Erika Westhoff. It's in a small town that doesn't automatically offer recycling. So it's a service that community members have to pay extra. And this might not be necessarily able to do, right? They might not be able to do this due to financial reasons. And the libraries can help serve as centers of advocacy for social change in this area. Absolutely, and libraries, at least in New York, participate on a day of recycling. And um, definitely there are examples. Um, there is another answer to why they need to know um, SDGs for to use them in the futures. Libraries play a vital role in disseminating information and education. And we can definitely assist communities to live um, uh, in sustainability. We have another three comments, let's say in the Philippines, the public library is having an urban gardening for eco-literacy. That sounds very interesting. 
and um, it reminds me that um, the um, there is a, a library 2.0 webinar that I am um, symposium that I am uh, curating for San Jose State University and it's on April 4. This is a little advertisement, it's free, but it includes um, it includes a presentation from the Philippines on how gardening is being used and to improve our wellness. And so um, it's very interesting how these themes can uh, be combined because everything works for sustainability. And then um, in the Philippines, they are using QR codes that have full information about certain plants and vegetables. Oh, interesting technology to help us to understand the environment and the planet. And lastly, uh, Jessica Rainer, um, Raymer shares that the tiny library of um, a town or city in Germany uh, is working on sustainability for young people. That's what I am understanding from the chat. Thank you so much. There are so many good examples from different countries around the world. And I hope people are inspired and motivated by these. Um, a last example that is coming in before I hand this to, um, to um, our colleagues and if I said, in the Public Library of Cologne, they had a Ment Festival with the topic of sustainability and um, the program was mostly for children that's beautiful sustainability and children right we have to teach them early young all right well thank you so much everyone it's been a pleasure to uh, be here with you today during this webinar it will be recorded but before we continue i would like to um then go back to albina and i think she's going to close our webinar is that correct Yes, but uh, before we close this, I think we have two questions in uh, the Q&A box. And okay. maybe uh, if our speakers can uh, answer these questions shortly. For okay. our first, for the first question, um, Petra Hauke already signaled that she's going to answer mm -hmm. it. The, okay, then the second question was, do you know any examples of teaching uh, sustainable development goals in, in LIS schools in your countries? Maybe Loida, Christina, Petra, can you give any examples very short? I don't know of any, but, but that's it. I have recently started to um, partner with San Jose State University and we are looking into including uh, increasing the themes of sustainability um, in uh, many areas of the school so uh, stay tuned this looks like a great opportunity to make some really cool things happen yeah I want to add that I also haven't heard about a particular program that would be just on the SDGs uh, in the university, but I've heard uh, about sustainability being discussed within other courses. So that's, I think, what is happening. In Germany, it is not very common, but step by step, we are growing. But I would like to turn over to Susanne and Estretan from Austria, because in my mind, uh, they are very, very busy uh, to promote these SDGs and the uh, Green Library issues uh, in the education and training uh, sector in your country. Well, it's not, um, so the SDGs are not formally in our curriculums, uh, but they are, of course, part of our education and training programs. And we are trying to um, uh, encourage our students our librarians to learn about the SDGs and we do projects such as workshops. And we also tell about um, projects such as the library map of the world, for example. Thank you very much. I think uh, today's webinar is the first step uh, to enter the LIS school uh, field. And uh, I saw on the attendance list that there, there were there are a few uh, LIS school teachers. So I think they will get, uh, get some ideas for their courses. At least uh, this, uh, this will be the topic in uh, 
uh, various um, courses in, in the LIS schools. I would like to thank our keynote speakers, Loida, Petra, and Christina for uh, wonderful presentations and comments and your answers. It was very interesting and I think that uh, our LIS students uh, uh, right now know more about uh, this topic and they will bring this experience into the libraries when they uh, begin um, working in the libraries or I think some of them already working in the libraries so they can share this experience and these examples with their colleagues. And also I would like to thank Suzanne and Katerina uh, for organizing today's webinar and uh, assisting here in uh, this webinar. Uh, I think this was very interesting and productive talk. Uh, and uh, we inspire our colleagues uh, to share this recording when, we, when it will be posted on our YouTube channel. Uh, and so uh, more people, more libraries, more LIS specialists, and uh, especially LIS students will uh, know more about this uh, uh, important topic uh, nowadays. Thank you very much. And thank you uh, uh, to our attendees for your time and for joining us today. And please stay tuned uh, and uh, follow us on our social media and we have uh, more webinars for LA students. Thank you very much.